Hello, this is Brother Tots, and today I really want to talk about something that's really been burdening my heart, especially for Christians uh, who are Bible believing and born again. Um, and when they go out into the world to share the good news of the gospel, or they share the, the gospel with their family members or any other friends or coworkers or people who you know, people always encounter this type of um, question or so-called statement that other people would say back to them after they've shared the gospel with them. So this is the statement, is that all roads lead to God. We're all God's children. Um, Jesus is not, not the only way. Um, and God is in, you know, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, but all of these different religions are ultimately the same um, in their fundamental beliefs. So they're basically saying that all religions are fundamentally the same, same and superficially different. But, um, and so people who come across this thing get challenged about their faith, because obviously the scripture says something that's very different. Um, and by the way, this doctrine that, you know, all roads lead to God, we're all God's children, this universal doctrine that all religions are fundamentally the same is the antichrist religion, or it's the way of, it's a morally relativistic way of thinking. And it's something that the antichrist is promoting especially through the new age movement and especially through the satanic occult. So that is their fundamental belief because in Satanism, everything is just do as you will. So this is fundamentally a satanic doctrine in and of itself, but I'm going to break down um, how to think about this because actually before when I was in the new, just came out of the new age movement and I shared the gospel and how Jesus was the only way to many different types of new agers and especially uh, progressive Christians um, who are very liberal in their way of looking at the Bible. They don't believe that the Bible is the word of God, these progressive Christians. Um, when I would go out telling them, I would get pushback because they, they knew that I was, they pointed the finger at me for being intolerant just because I, I believed the Bible 100%. I believed each and every word 100%. And I thought that Jesus was the only way. So I got some pushback for being intolerant. And, um, and that's just one of the things that I struggled with in my faith is um, I and I really wanted to abandon the Christian faith, actually, because I felt that um, this view was wrong. Like, why would Jesus be the only way? Wow, how intolerant. Like, if, you know, there's many other good people in other religions, like, like, why, why am I claiming that Jesus is the only way? I'm the one who's intolerant. I'm the one who's mean. Like, how can Jesus being the only way be a be a right belief statement. So I really did struggle through this question, um, um, you know, about why the, why that was the case. Now we know from scripture um, first that Jesus says in John 14, six, that he's the way, the truth and the life and that nobody comes to the father, but through him. And in first Timothy two, five, it says there's only one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. So Jesus is the only way to God. Um, Jesus says that very clearly, um, but I want to go through some other reasons why um, all roads lead to God and we're all God's children or all religions are fundamentally the same. Why that's really such, that's, e that's a belief system that's equally as destructive as saying that Jesus is the only way. So let me show you these two reasons. First, it neglects the uniqueness and the speciality of all other religions and worldviews. It neglects the unique, unique perspective and the purpose of each and every single religion. So for example, a person who really believes in Islam would really say that Islam is the only way, um, according if they're fundamental in their belief of their own religion, they would say that's the only way and that Christianity and Judaism is completely different. Um, devout Jewish pe Jew people who follow Judaism would say that Ju Judaism is the only way. Um, and so as Hindus and Buddhists would also say that theirs is the only right way. And um, I have a reason for why Jesus is the only way. I did a video about that. Um, 
a, a while back. So you could t watch, um, I, I get more specific about why I believe that Jesus is the only way. If you want to take a look at that video, it's on my YouTube channel. But, um, but people who do believe that all roads lead to God, we're all God's children, disrespect people of other faiths who believe that theirs is the only way or theirs is the only right way. And people who tend to say this type of thing genuinely think that thinking this way that all roads lead to God is the only right way to think about God and about spiritual things. So they're actually also being as equally exclusive as those who say that theirs is the only right way to God. And, um, and they think that they're being tolerant by saying, oh, well, every road is the right way. You know, they're just being all inclusive and being all tolerant. But in fact, it's they're being the most intolerant people themselves because they're just saying that they're pushing their own worldview or their own perspective as being the only right one. And um, this is this thing, though, with moral relativism, that it doesn't stand on its own. You know, like when somebody tells me that there is no absolute truth, but is that statement absolutely true? You get the irony of that. So and even if there's another person, you know, for example, who said that um, who said that there's many um, different good aspects about each religion and not all religions are true, but not all religions are false. That's also an absolute way of viewing the world. Um, so you might have an absolute that kind of has a mix of both good and bad. And I really just want to show you a chart that I have here. So for example, like while I was in the new age movement, this was kind of, um, kind of the thing though. So you have a thought that comes into your mind and it says, oh, I'm feeling bad. And you have another thought that comes into your mind, or this is the opposite way of thinking, oh, I'm feeling really good. And then, or you could just say, I'm feeling neither good or bad. I acknowledge these thoughts, but I will meditate it away and be an observer of my thoughts. But each of these um, statements is an absolute in and of itself. Um, another example like this is that abortion is bad. Okay. So the op, op so that's an absolute statement. You know, abortion is good. That's the opposite of the statement, abortion is bad. But any neutral stance, like abortion can be both good and bad, or we shouldn't care about abortion because it does neither good nor bad. Those two thoughts are also um, absolute statements. So there's really no way of avoiding absolutes. So even if you, if you try to avoid an absolute by saying that, hey, you know, all roads lead to God, and you think that that isn't an absolute statement, you're just deceiving yourself because um, saying that all roads lead to God, that's an absolute statement. And it excludes all other beliefs, like a belief that, hey, you know, there is no God, or it excludes another belief, like this is the only way to God, or excludes another belief, like, you know, there's many good and bad aspects of each and every religion that each and every religion is not true nor false but there's truth, truths in, or there's partial truths in the Bible, or all of the Bible is true, or some of the Bible is true, or only half of the Bible is true, it excludes all other views, you know, by saying all roads lead to God. It, it, that in and of itself is an absolute statement that will cause division. So no matter what sort of belief system or way of thinking we come up, it always excludes. So there is no way to avoid absolutes. There's no way to avoid excluding other people, no matter if you change your way of thinking um, or change your philosophy or change your worldview. Um, and this is really, um, and another way of, do, of um, you know, why Jesus is the only way. And if people ask you why you think that, well, Jesus was the only one who suffered, was the only religious leader that, um, that historically suffered on man's most horrific torture device, the cross, shed his blood to pay the penalty of the crimes that we've done against God to forgive us and to rise again on the third day so that we could be made in right standing with God. And um, in other words, he's the only one who suffered um, and shed his blood upon the cross and rose again, um, came back to life, both physically and spiritually. And um, to to forgive us and to make us with right standing with God. So he was the only one who did that. And he's the only 
person who claimed to be God, who chose to become a man. And the only one who could take away the evil in the human heart, that is sin. And um, if you say that all roads lead to God, you're, you're basically saying that God is a God of injustice. God is a God of like murder. You know, God is a God who likes child molestation, stealing, looking at another person with lust or with sexual, perverse sexual intentions, pedophilia, rape, um, you know, disrespectfully calling somebody names, that God is a racist, God um, is, a, is a God of hate uh, um, at the core, God is a God who loves bullying, and um, it really, if you say that all roads lead to God, you're basically excluding the fact that God is perfect justice, God is perfectly holy, God is um, anything good that we do is not good enough to God, because God is so good, like God is better than any other human. You're basically neglecting the fact that God is better than any person in your life, that God is the God, is called God, and his title is God because of his goodness and not because he does bad things. It's rather he is a God, he he deserves to be call, called God because he's a God of perfect um, goodness and he hates evil and he hates um, anything evil within the human heart. So if you say that all roads lead to God, you're, you're basically excluding the fact that God is a God of justice. You know, God, God looks at the deep aspects of the human heart that God hates evil um, or evil that has happened to us or the evil that we do to other people or the way we hurt other people or the way we hurt ourselves um, or the way, way we disrespect him, you know, like it just really shows and it really says that, hey, God is not a God who could deliver me from my own evil human heart. Or it's saying that God cannot deliver me from sin. You're putting limitations on God by saying that all roads lead to God or we're all God's children. Um, another thing is that, um, another thing is that, you know, the definition of love in the Bible is loving your enemies, laying your life down for your enemies and suffering for your enemies in order to bless them and to forgive them. And nobody can deny that sacrificing or giving up your life for some someone who's undeserving of your love is the very definition of love itself. Like nobody can deny that. You know, Jesus says that there's no greater love than this, that he that lays his life down for his friends. Like nobody can deny that that is the very definition of love and that God is love. He loved his enemies. Um, he loved those who had different opinions than him, had different views than him, who hated for who he truly was, um, you know, but God loved them back and even went to the extent of dying for them. Nobody can deny that that is the pure definition of love. Um, and love, love in that sense, the definition of love in that sense is, you know, of true love is very exclusive in and of itself. You know, and it also neglects free will because if you say that all roads lead to God and one person makes the choice of being a Hindu, another person chooses to be a Muslim, like there's no uniqueness in choice, you know, but, you know, and lastly, I just really want to say this, that God is, is the God of the Bible is a God of tolerance. You know, he allowed Satan to speak to Adam and Eve. You know, there's many Christian conservatives, you know, along with secular and other um, conservative people who think that people who talk or, about pornography or talk about radical LGBTQ agendas on their platform, talk about transgenderism or, per, or you know, new age or um, other belief systems which are dead or promote abortion are deadly and dangerous, but they do not silence them because they understand that truth will win in the end. And that's, that's the heart of Christianity is that we even though people disagree with us, we still love them at the very end of the day. We still wish them the best. And, uh, and we like, even if we disagree with them and maybe we consider this, um, you know, disagreement separates us and it becomes us versus them. We still love the them. Praise the Lord Jesus.